Today on IODP Expedition 342, Newfoundland. We, we did it, we did it. And uh, amazingly, you know, we, we covered exactly 5,400 meters, more than five kilometers. Oh, this is just a start. We have hundreds of sample requests pending and uh, that we're gonna further discuss and compile uh, and eventually sample about six months from now. We're gonna take 50,000 samples or so out of these cores and people take them to their labs. And that's when the real work begins. <laughs> We're in one of, uh, of three places where we have a huge library of deep sea sediments. And like a library, it's got all these stories to tell. Uh, and we're here to figure out what some of those stories are by opening up some of the books. And the books consist of these sediment cores that are stored in an enormous refrigerator. And we're hauling out those cores one by one to well, to see the whole history of the Earth from 120 million years ago up to nearly the present day. Now we got almost 152 kilometers of these cores. This is the outcome of uh, all the effort of drilling scientifically in all the oceans. That's the core, the material researchers then can work on and uh, make all these great findings. So it's a great treasure this core repository. Well, that's exactly what they are, and we basically contributed a new bounty, which is from our particular project, and they curate the cores, they keep them for on the undetermined amount of time, so that people, scientists, can go back and take samples for further research. So when we cut these cores on the ship, we try to deal with them in a very uh, thoughtful, careful manner so that we use what we need for our projects and we preserve what we don't need right away because there are always scientists coming back later and uh, do more research based on new ideas and new methods in the future, sometimes 10, 20 years later. Assembling party is the unique occasion where all the scientists involved in one expedition come to our repository to meet and then jointly sample all the cores of this expedition for their post-course studies. It's, it's a great pleasure so because it's to get to see the unique material firsthand by this group and but it's also hard work. Well it doesn't look like gold <laughs> but it is. <laughs> So on the ship, we were all engaged in this sort of massive effort to try to describe, you know, all the material that the drillers were bringing up. Um, but we didn't have any time to actually collect the samples that we need to do uh, more detailed kinds of analyses. So we're here to basically slice up the core with knives and putty knives and, and hammers and chisels. Uh, it's very sort of physical kind of work. I've got lots of a little wounds on my fingers from uh, cutting up the core. I've missed you for seven uh, months. I miss you too. Good. Yeah. Well, it's also really great to bring together all of the scientists uh, who will be working on this material for the next couple of years. So, in a way, it's kind of like a reunion uh, from all the people who were on the ship. And then there's actually been some new faces too, people who didn't sail with us, uh, but who nonetheless are going to do uh, kinds of research from the kinds of cores that we collected at sea. So the samples have to be treated, they have to be processed, and then all sorts of suites of data will be generated, uh, geochemical, uh, paleontological, sedimentological, these sorts of things. And uh, gradually you, we build together the large data sets that are needed to tackle the hypotheses, the questions that we pose scientifically. Stripes, stripes, stripes. That looks like... It certainly could. This looks very promising. So we went out to sea with uh, sort of an objective in mind, a couple of major things that we wanted to study. We wanted to study the glaciation of the northern hemisphere. We wanted to 
get records from uh, a time when the world is much warmer than it is today uh, as sort of a, a way of seeing what a future warm world might have actually looked like in the geologic past. And we also wanted a record of the evolution of life on, on the planet. You go from a factory sort of mode back into a more kind of iterative mode and testing all of our competing hypotheses to destruction. In the scientific world, when we open up these cores, we're finding out very basic things about how the world actually worked in the past. And in some cases, it's something where we say, oh, ho-hum, we kind of already knew that that was going on. And in other cases, it's like, wow, you know, I had no idea that uh, Greenland got uh, big ice sheets on it, you know, 34 million years ago. There it is in our sediment record, showing very clearly that that happened. And so there are very fundamental discoveries to be had by opening up those cores. I think that coming here this week reminds one of why you got into this in the first place. Being in a room surrounded by 40 smart people who are interested in the same problems that you are interested in is, a, is an enormous kick. And uh, I said this once before on the ship, when I get back to Southampton with all of these samples, I guess I'll be sitting there thinking, and so it really begins. The bulk of the research will start as soon as these samples arrive at the investigators' laboratories, and they, they get busy right away, and they will work on these samples for the next couple of years. We will gain answers, okay? We will answer our core questions, but then we will discover that there are other things which we hadn't thought about uh, that are equally interesting and that will lead us off into new directions. And I think that's one of the really great things about having a core repository. It's a little different than a regular library. A library has books and there's knowledge printed in the books. A core repository has these sedimentary records of what the world used to look like, and there's so many undiscovered stories in those sediments. That's what makes it so much fun.